Hi everybody, Terry Ryder from Hotspotting. This is my once a month live q and A. It's your opportunity to throw your questions about real estate across Australia at me, uh, real estate issues, or if you're like most people, you want to ask about uh, locations, locations where you might be thinking of buying something or locations where you already own real estate and wondering how those markets are going. So please let me have your questions, um, key in your questions to the, um, the comments panel that you should see in front of you. And I'll do my best to, to answer those questions here live on Facebook. Uh, if you're asking about location, it'd be helpful to give a little bit of context, not just the name of the suburb, but um, you know what city, because quite often uh, a suburb name recurs three or four or five different uh, parts of Australia. So uh, a little bit of context to the location, uh, some information about exactly where you're talking about and perhaps some, some information about why your interest is in that location so I can give as helpful an answer as possible. While we're waiting for people to, to come online and send through their questions, a little bit about what's going on in real estate at the moment. One of, one of the big stories that's creating uh, the underlying conditions in real estate markets around Australia right now is the fact that we have rising demand at a time of low supply. Uh, the reasons why uh, supply is low at this time of rising demand, there's two major factors. One is that listings are low. Vendors in the major city markets in particular haven't yet really come to the party and responded to the fact that uh, demand from buyers is rising. So listings are actually at a pretty low level. In December, according to figures from SQM Research, the number of properties listed for sale across Australia was 12% lower than December 12 months earlier. So comparing apples with apples, we find there's been quite, quite a major drop off in um, the number of properties that are for sale. So that's one factor. The other factor is that the level of construction of new dwellings is much lower than we've seen in the past. We had a couple of record years of construction, particularly apartments in the major cities of Australia in particular, and also markets like the Gold Coast. And uh, that has fallen away a lot. And um, the figures that came out uh, today, in fact, from the Australian Bureau of Statistics with commentary from organisations like Master Builders and the Housing Industry Association uh, indicated that the level of starts of new dwellings, so new construction starts in the September quarter, which is um, the latest figures we have available from the ABS was the lowest it's been for seven years. So the last time the level of new construction starts for dwellings across Australia were this low was early in 2013. So we've got low levels of new construction, of new dwellings, and we've got vendors still reluctant to list their properties for sale. So those two factors combined mean there's a low level of supply at a time when demand for real estate is rising. And uh, mostly it's coming from home buyers and first home buyers. We still don't have evidence of a big influx of investors, uh, but that's probably likely to happen as we get further into 2020. So we're gonna have strong demand at a time when supply continues to be low. That's why we saw evidence that late in 2019, Prices were rising in most of the capital cities and also most of the regional markets across Australia. And that's going to continue while we have this imbalance between supply and demand, just basic economics. Um, having said that, there is an indication that this will change. Uh, building approvals actually rose in November. So there's two different things. How just earlier I was talking about actual construction starts. These figures relate to building approvals. And of course, it takes time for approvals to turn into actual starts and construction. So the figures uh, month on month um, rose, building approvals rose in November. And that's the first time we've seen a monthly rise for two years. So that's an indication that you know, developers and builders are starting to respond to this imbalance between supply and demand. But it's going to be some time be before those approvals actually translate into construction of homes, houses and apartments on the ground. So we're going to continue to have for a while this uh, this shortage in most markets across Australia. Not all, but, but most. So um, that's going to be a major factor in driving the dynamics of real estate markets. Um, in um, 
Australia. Um, most markets in Australia, Sydney uh, still has areas of oversupply, vacancies are relatively high there, also in Darwin, but in most of the capital cities of Australia, vacancies are well below 3%. In places like Hobart, it's about half a percent. Um, and Adelaide and Canberra is about 1%. And many of the regional markets in Australia as well have um, very low vacancies, very tight rental markets, so rents are rising. And what we know to be true from our experience with real estate over many years is that um, when vacancies are low and rents are rising, prices tend to respond to that. So we're, we're likely to see um, pressure on prices from that factor alone. What else is happening in uh, markets across Australia? Um, I'll just continue to talk about the main stories of the week while we're waiting for people to come through um, with their questions. Um, there's evidence that first home buyers are responding in a major way to the new federal scheme of assistance that started on the 1st of January. According to the scheme, um, first home buyers can uh, get their first home for a deposit as small as 5% without having to pay lenders mortgage insurance. That's because the federal government is providing a guarantee to support that. Um, but they're only making 10,000 of those uh, packages available and the early take up suggests that uh, the allowance that they've made for this year is going to be very very quickly exhausted so I think they're probably going to need to reconsider the limitation they've placed on that scheme and hopefully they will expand it so that um, otherwise the market's going to get a very short term sugar hit from from this and then uh, uh, when the allowance of 10,000 uh, applications is being used up no one else will be able to access that. And it's going to be very frustrating for others who um, haven't been uh, first cabs off the rank. Um, obviously, the big story around the country um, continues to be the devastating bushfires in various parts of Australia. And um, there's evidence of um, all sorts of assistance emerging for people impacted by that, both at a government level, um, various fundraising that's happening with various organisations and individuals, celebrities using their, their high profile to, um, to raise money or donating some of their earnings from sporting events, for example, to bushfire appeals. Uh, the major banks have announced various assistant packages um, to help people who have lost their homes or had their businesses um, damaged or wiped out by, by bushfires. Um, so that's a major factor that's emerging. Um, clearly those areas that are being most directly impacted that's certainly going to affect the real estate markets. One of the impacts is going to be a shortage of properties and um, pressure on rentals because um, with the loss of homes and people have lost their homes needing somewhere to rent while homes are being rebuilt, it's going to mean that um, rental markets are, are likely to rise in those locations. Hopefully people won't profit here and exploit that situation by jacking up their rentals. But um, nevertheless, it's gonna create a shortage of homes in some of those areas most directly impacted. And that's likely to put um, pressure on rentals in those markets. Okay, so John's asking um, quite a few of townhouses in Tugan, that's Tugan's on the Gold Coast. Um, uh, on the southern part of the, the coastal strip of the Gold Coast. Um, I don't particularly have a, have a view off the cuff, John, about, um, about townhouses in that market. Um, and just uh, call up some basic data about, about Tugan. Um, it's a market uh, or a suburb of the Gold Coast where um, units and townhouses are more predominant than houses, not totally, but um, there are more sales of attached dwellings than uh, than there are houses. Median house price six eighty thousand, median unit price about four sixty. Um, there's been some uplift in house prices, according to the figures from from CoreLogic, eight percent rise in the median house price in that area, John, in the last uh, twelve months. Um, and a small rise in the median apartment price. Um, there's not a lot of difference, according to these figures in the, the rental yields. Um, apartments, as you would expect, are a little bit high, but not uh, significantly higher. Um, I'll just have a look at um, 
what the vacancies are in that, in that market at the moment because that's always a very relevant statistic. In fact, I think um, generally speaking, when people are thinking about markets, media tends to concentrate exclusively on what's happening with medium prices. Um, vacancy rates and rental trends are often a precursor to price because they're a very good leading indicator that I think more people should pay attention to. In that postcode, I'll just check I've got the right postcode. Yeah, postcode 4DT4. The vacancy rate, according to the Eskimo research, is under 1%, and it's been below 2% for a long time, many years. So that indicates that the, the rental market in that particular area, John, is, is strong. Vacancies are low. Rental yields are pretty good. Um, certainly a lot better than you'd get in any of our major cities. Over 5% is typical for apartments and 4.5% for houses. So those are, are quite strong rental yields, no doubt supported by the low vacancy rate in that area. Um, so it looks like a good solid market. Generally speaking, the that southern uh, precinct of the Gold Coast Strip is, is doing quite well. I think better than the, the sort of the, the glitzy big name areas like Surface Paradise, Main Beach, Broad Beach. I think sort of down in the southern parts of the, the Gold Coast Coastal Strip heading towards Coolangatta. Generally, the market, I think, is, is, is stronger, performing better. Close to the airport um, and all the infrastructure that's springing up around that um, progressively over time. So probably the better end of the Gold Coast market to be in. Um, David is asking about Aubrey. Um, has it peaked in this cycle? Um, okay, I don't think so, David. Um, generally speaking, I like Aubrey with Donga as a market for people to consider. I think investors should... Uh, consider places like Aubrey Wodonga more than they do. Uh, the sorts of markets that um, are very steady, very safe, very affordable, good rental yields, underpinned by very solid local economy, um, a very diversified economy, a strategic location, affordable real estate, good rental yields. It's, it's a good market for, for investors to buy. It's a market that's unlikely to to ever have a, an outrageous boom, the way the big cities do, but it's also unlikely to have a major bust either. It's just a very steady and safe market. And there's a lot to be said for owning real estate in a place like Aubrey Wodonga as part of a broader portfolio. Um, I think there's still um, more growth to come. It's It's been pretty solid lately, but I think it's gonna continue to be um, moving forward. Um, so I don't see any indication that it's it's peaked, David, in the current cycle. I think it's just going to keep on chugging on. It hasn't certainly, certainly reached a, a strong peak as yet. Um, indications are that um, the local economy is good. Um, vacancies are low. It's always a, a leading indicator, as I mentioned earlier, for, for markets, for people to, to keep in mind. So... Yeah, we, uh, we continue to include, um, we're just actually um, in the process of producing and hotspotting the new edition of our top five regional New South Wales hotspots report. Um, and um, Aubrey Wodonga is in the current edition and uh, it's going to be in the new edition as well, which is an indication that we think that it's uh, a good market to consider and one that's still got um, some growth potential going forward. So uh, please, um, please give us your questions. Um, while I'm waiting for more questions to come through, I'm gonna to continue to, to talk about um, some of the, the events happening, the broader events, the macro events perhaps happening in markets across Australia. As I mentioned, I think that there's too much focus in mainstream media on what's happening with medium prices and auction clearance rates as if they're the only barometers. They actually tell us what's happening now or in the recent past with prices, but I think most people out there, what they want to know is what's going to happen to prices and locations that they're interested in in the future. And what they get in media doesn't actually tell them much about that. With well, some of the leading indicators that can actually give you some guidance as to what's likely to happen with prices is vacancy rates and rental trends. Sales volumes is another one, but 
more readily available as data about vacancies. So if you're considering a location, have a look at what's happening at the vacancy rates. You can go to the SQM Research website, for example. Uh, it's got vacancy rates for every postcode in the country. It's freely available. Um, and so if you've got a location where vacancies are well under 3% and have been for some time, and there's also indication that rents are rising, then it's likely the price is going to follow suit. It's a leading indicator. Quite often in the major markets or in all markets, uh, when there's a change in the market and prices start to rise before prices rise, what we see is that vacancies drop and rentals rise. And that's a, a very good leading indicator to be aware of. Um, if you're trying to find out, get a clue to a market that's going to show some price growth in in the future. I might, might go back to that point um, in a little while. Uh, Sunil was asking your thoughts about Liverpool in New South Wales, 2170. Yep. Liverpool, Sunil, as a, as a market, um, a very important part of the Sydney metropolitan area market, one that we've always shown an interest in and we continue to track. Um, like a lot of parts of Sydney, um, prices are down compared with where they were 12 months ago. But if you look at long-term trends, it's been a very, very good performer. Let me just get 2170, postcode 2170. A Liverpool is like a CBD uh, for the for sort of southwestern portion of the Sydney metropolitan area. Um, one of the factors that... Um, impacting on that market at the moment. And one of the reasons why that market's a little bit down compared to where it was maybe 12 months ago is that uh, vacancies have risen. Um, so it's, you know, through new construction of apartments in particular in uh, that area, um, that's likely to be temporary because generally speaking, if you look over the last sort of 10 or 15 years, vacancies in the Liverpool area have been generally around about uh, 2%, sometimes as low as 1%. Right now, they're above 3%, which is not a helpful factor for the market. But if you look at the long-term trends, um, like the 10-year growth averages for houses in uh, in Liverpool, the suburb of Liverpool has averaged 8% a year. Now, that's probably as good as anywhere that you'll find anywhere in Australia. Uh, apartments, 7% per, per year. And apartments do dominate that market. There are a lot more apartments than houses in the suburb of Liverpool. Um, but they have averaged over the last 10 years, 7% per year, that's very good for apartments. Again, you'd struggle to find anywhere in Australia that's with a better um, long-term record of growth than that. 8% per year over 10 years for houses, 7% per year over 10 years for apartments. So a very good long-term performer. Currently, prices are down. Um, and one of the reasons for that is that, that vacancies have blown out a little bit lately. It's one of those areas of Sydney. Sydney is one of the exceptions to the general rule that vacancies are very low across Australia. Sydney's current vacancy rate is about 3.5% in some pockets. Mm -hmm. Liverpool is one of those places. They're uh, a little bit higher than that. So that's something to keep in mind. Uh, Russell Maitland is Maitland going to continue its strong population growth. Well, I don't see any reason why not, Russell. It's it's part of that uh, Hunter Valley precinct just outside of Newcastle. Um, taking a long-term view, that's a growth market. Newcastle, a very strong regional city, one of the largest cities in Australia, bigger than some of our capital cities, in fact. Uh, lots going on in terms of infrastructure spending and development. I think it's going to be a very, very strong market, taking a long-term view. And then just outside of there, We've got all those towns um, out in the Hunter region, of which Maitland is one. It's been um, like it's, we've seen signs of growth there in the recent times. Let me just call up some figures for Maitland. Uh, according to the figures, the median house price uh, for Maitland, Russell has risen 8%. In the last 12 months now, you know, bearing in mind what's happened with our, some of our big city markets where prices actually fell throughout 2019, but in markets like Maitland, they actually rose. 8% increase in the median price, it's now 415,000. Um, and uh, let me just check 
on 2320. Let's see what's happening with vacancies in that precinct. Yeah, below around about one and a half percent, and it's been below two and a half percent in vacancies for the last three or four years. So it's been there was a time, there was a period when the um, Hunter Valley market was all the rage, and what as often happens, developers polled and they booked too much stuff, lots of new housing estates, and vacancies rose quite high throughout that area. That was back sort of 2000. 13, 14, 15, but since then, vacancies have come down and it's now in a position where that's a strong market. Vacancies are acceptable levels. There's still strong demand. It's an affordable market uh, relative to, firstly, Sydney, but also Newcastle. So I think we've kind of continued to see uh, both investors and home buyers targeting areas like Maitland uh, for all those reasons, lifestyle, affordability, um, the infrastructure is good. Connections to Newcastle, good, etc. Uh, Ben's asking my thoughts on the Sippy Downs region. That Sippy Downs is a, a developing suburb on the Sunshine Coast. And I'm just going to call up some figures. I generally think it's um, that area, Ben, is... Um, they're asking, can we expect growth in 2020? Well, I certainly think so. I think the Sunshine Coast generally is going to be one of the growth markets, not just this year, but going forward. It's uh, one of the strongest, I think, economic stories in Australia anyway. What's happening in the Sunshine Coast economy in various ways is quite extraordinary. It's gone from being um, like a tourist town to being what I think we can justifiably call an international city. Uh, in a very short space of time. Um, the, the airport's going international. Uh, the international subsea cables coming in uh, will provide the fastest internet connections to Asia from anywhere on the eastern coast of Australia. Um, its new medical precinct is of world class. Uh, that and a whole heap of other things. The new CBD being built from the ground up in Marichidor. So the Sunshine Coast is a great economic story and it's driving a strong property market. Uh, Sippy Downs is part of that and of course it's got proximity to important things like um, the university, um, uh, UE Insurance has got its national headquarters out, out in that area, uh, the big changes in the motorway, billion dollars being spent on the, the motorway as it runs up the, the western side of the, the Sunshine Coast coastal strip, um, that's all proximate uh, to Sippy Downs so I think uh, we're going to see that um, doing pretty well going forward. Um, in the last 12 months, median price has grown uh, 4%. Um, so not big growth, but but solid growth. And um, I think it's going to continue to be a strong performer. Stronger than that, I think, in 2020. And um, going forward, it's going to be a good place to own real estate, I think. Um, Maz is asking about a, there's a townhouse development, large townhouse development and the plans for Mango Hill. That's uh, sort of the North Lakes master plan community area. Will have a positive or negative effect on local home prices. Well, the only thing that really has a negative impact, you know, this, this is a growth area. You're talking about the North Lakes area um, in the Moreton Bay local government area in the northern suburbs of Brisbane. This, this is a growth market a very dynamic market. It's been targeted by all sorts of buyers because of it's affordable, the infrastructure is good. Um, and North Lakes is a master plan community with lots of community. There's a big retail offering. Uh, there's a new university campus uh, well under construction in that general area, uh, in the suburb of Petrie, Launton, that area. Uh, close to major jobs nodes, um, not far from the Brisbane Airport and the Bris Port of Brisbane, which has got a huge jobs node around it. Um, so I think, you know, it's a very strong market. The only thing that can sort of cause prices to be suppressed is if there's an oversupply. So you're suggesting this very big development might do that. I'm assuming that the, the proponents of that project aren't just going to just build 700 townhouses in one hit they will happen in stages. They will be released to the market um, in some sort of a relativity to demand at the time. So um, that being the case, the impact on local values um, should be 
uh, not negative. Um, it's all, all part of the evolution of that precinct. So I think it's just, just part of the dynamic going forward, provided they don't oversupply the market, that's always a risk. So um, let me just have a look at 5A9. Bear with me a moment. Okay, currently the vacancy rate in that postcode as is 2%, which is very acceptable. Um, there have been periods where, so going back to mid 2017, where vacancies were around 4%, which is a little bit too high, higher than you'd rather, but right now, and for the last, um, for the last, say, um, yeah, two years or so, Uh, vacancies have been at acceptable levels, so there's no sign at this stage that um, there's too much supply in that market. And I would assume, as I said, that um, the proponents of that townhouse development will be releasing it in stages, so it's unlikely to have a major impact. Uh, Vesna, the purchase soon around 600,000. Thinking about the Sunshine Coast, where would you suggest for good capital growth, good rental return? Okay, Look, um, as I mentioned earlier, I'm not sure how recently you joined the conversation, Vesna, but um, just been talking about the Sunshine Coast. It's a very strong economy, emerging strongly, um, rapidly, um, being a very, very serious regional city, uh, not just the tourist town that it used to be. And when it was a tourist town, it was kind of like, in terms of its economy, a one-horse, one-trick pony, leaving it very vulnerable. But it, the economy has broadened and strengthened so i think going forward it's going to be a very good place to own real estate um now in terms of the price range you're talking um i would suggest sort of looking um in the area sort of between say maruchidor which is like the, the, the central suburb of the sunshine coast where they're building the new cbd and then heading south from there towards the new medical precinct where the Sunshine Coast University Hospital is and all the stuff that sprung up around it. There's a number of suburbs sort of through there um, that are kind of in the price range that you are talking. Um, so suburbs like um, Warana, Pariara. And I'll just uh, I'm just looking at my book of maps here. Um, just bear with me now so I can get the right one. Eddie. Map 80. Yeah. Budna, um, but or Badena. Mountain Creek. Um, certainly not Manyama Canal suburb, very expensive, meeting price over a million dollars, but Pariara, Warana, Mountain Creek, those sorts of areas have um, well located good connections in terms of the, the motorway system for the Sunshine Coast, close to um, good shopping, close to beaches, and, and particularly close to that big medical precinct, which is um, like an incredibly important jobs node. Um, it's brought a lot of new people into the Sunshine Coast working in that medical precinct. And that's certainly been one of the reasons why the Sunshine Coast market has uh, lifted. Um, and there's asking about Park Ridge. And um, let me just get up some information about that. And I'll also, I'll refer to it in my book of maps. We're talking about Brisbane, the Brisbane metropolitan area. Two sixty. Okay, so we're talking uh, 
southern suburbs of Brisbane. I assume that's what you're talking about. 4125. Part of Logan City, um, and it's uh, markets sort of struggling a little bit lately. Logan City generally, but Park Ridge is a bit of an exception. It's it's doing okay in the last twelve months, according to these figures. The median price uh, for houses has risen uh, six six percent, um, but long term growth average isn't that flash. But certainly, it's uh, risen uh, ninety house sales in the last twelve months, up six percent. So that's that's fairly solid. Four one two five. I'm just having a look, checking. Oops, see rates in that market. Yeah, vacancies. According to these figures, um, uh, are pretty high, uh, which indicates that. Uh, I mean, that's uh, an area where there's. Um, a lot of land available for new development. This is one of the problems I think um, that the Logan City market generally has, has experienced that um, there is land available and there's a lot of major new estates happening, particularly up in the western portion, and that's bringing a lot of new supply into the market. And that's um, what we, we talked about a little bit earlier in terms of the, the question I had about the, the Mango Hill North Lakes area of Brisbane. The one thing that can really suppress the growth in values is when there's a lot of new supply and causes vacancies to rise and there's, there's more supply than demand and developers sort of struggle to get the balance right sometimes because you know, the lead times in bringing um, major estates to market and major high-rise apartment, you know, there's years of lead time and it's impossible to get your, your timing absolutely perfect, particularly uh, as there are others doing similar things and uh, sometimes you can end up with high vacancies and oversupply, and that certainly seems to be the case for that particular part of the, the Logan City market at the moment. Um, the other thing I'd say about it is it's not sort of proximate to where some of the new developments happening in Logan City uh, where there's land available is sort of a long way from the, the infrastructure. The, the established suburbs are sort of cling to the, the transport spine, which is the, the the M1 motorway that connects central Brisbane to the Gold Coast and the train line connecting the two places follows, tends to follow that, um, that motorway spine as well. That's where a lot of the transport infrastructure is, that's where the big retail offering is, that's where the jobs nodes are. And so, I mean, if I was, you know, investing in the Logan City market, that's where I'd want to be, those established suburbs, not the new ones out where there's lots of land, lots of new houses being built, and not a lot of infrastructure to, to drive capital growth. Um, Jessica's asking about the Central Coast. So we're talking Central Coast, New South Wales, a little bit north of Sydney, I assume. Like that market has had, up until say 2019, that market had had a couple of years of really strong growth, sort of, I guess, a ripple effect out of Sydney's boom. That was partly responsible for the uplift in the Central Coast market. And then it was very clear last year that the market had peaked and passed its peak and prices were no longer rising. Um, so last year was a, a kind of a down year for the Central Coast market after a couple of years of really good growth. And we're now seeing markets generally revitalizing as a general statement. We saw it towards the, the latter part of 2019 there was a revival of demand helped by the federal election result, um, the APRA changes, the interest rate reductions, the tax cuts, um, all of that fed into the mix. And uh, we've seen certainly city market revive. And so the Central Coast is likely to get some benefit from that. But I think in the current cycle, um, it certainly had a, a good run. It's probably going to be just a, a fairly placid market for a while before the next big cycle happens. That would be my assessment, um, both for Sydney and the Central Coast. Uh, Joel is asking about Ipswich. Um, my thoughts about Ipswich, which is the, the local government area that encapsulates the a big 
southwestern portion of the greater Brisbane area. Um, I think its prospects for growth going forward are pretty good, Joel. It's, um, it's the most affordable part of the Brisbane metropolitan area market. There are still suburbs there with median prices in the 200,000s and plenty in the 300,000s. Um, probably the most important factor is that lots of big jobs nodes and there continues to be new and bigger ones created out there. A lot of, a lot of businesses that have got um, sort of big sort of warehousing or manufacturing needs head out towards Ipswich because the land is cheap and um, the transport links are good. There's rail links, there's motorway links. Um, so we've seen some very big enterprises established there and new ones coming in like the, there's a business that's got the contract to provide, it's a $5 billion federal government contract to provide uh, vehicles for the military and that's all happening out in Ipswich City. So, you know, lots of jobs being created out there and people like um, what drives people to to buy where they buy. Um, people are driven by the desire to buy affordably close to where they work if they can. And so if you've got an affordable market and lots of jobs being created and Ipswich stars, then you're going to get demand for real estate. So I think uh, Ipswich, which in the past has been a capital growth leader in Brisbane, uh, if you go back half a dozen years and you had a top 20 list of the, um, the suburbs in Greater Brisbane with the strongest capital growth rates, most of them would have been out in Ipswich. So there's been a, a low period. The market hasn't done a lot in terms of growth in the last, say, four or five years, but I think it's now coming into a period where that's going to change. And generally speaking, vacancies are acceptable levels and there's lots of, you know, as I said, jobs being created through these Jobs knows the, the RAF base is out there and that's expanding all the time. Uh, master plan communities like Springfield and the Ripley Valley ones, they're sort of not just building houses, but lots of big infrastructure, Springfield in particular, which is, you know, it's been underway for 20 years and continues to be a work in progress. But there's a university campus, there's a private hospital, there's a huge, you know, um, modern shopping centre commercial precinct, all sorts of things. So those are all factors in favour of Ipswich. I think it's definitely one to consider, particularly for people, home buyers or investors on a budget. Um, growth in the Redland Bay area, getting a lot of questions about Brisbane, not surprisingly, because Brisbane's very top of mind for uh, investors right around the country. We've sort of got the message that um, maybe Sydney and Melbourne have had their run. Where next and where can we buy with prospects for growth, that's a lot more affordable than Sydney and Melbourne and Brisbane's very top of mind um, in that regard. So, and also there's other factors pointing towards Brisbane. The infrastructure spend is cranking up, the population data is favouring southeast Queensland more and more. So we can expect Brisbane generally to be showing better growth this year and beyond. And Redland Bay, well, it's I think it's a very underrated market, Lucas. It's, uh, it's often overlooked and uh, doesn't feature in the, the general discussion about, about markets, but I think it's, it's got a lot to offer. It's um, down uh, um, suburbs overlooking or near to Moreton Bay, wonderful sort of lifestyle precinct, very affordable based on what it offers. Um, and uh, there's some big sort of infrastructure and property developments sort of in planning there. So if they go ahead as planned, they'll create jobs and generate economic activity and help to drive that um, uh, market in the city of Redlands out on the eastern side of the Brisbane metropolitan area. Okay. Uh, Lucas, you're asking about Leyburn. I've got to admit, I've, I gather it's out in the Toowoomba area. Um, 70 acres, wow. Um, what did it happen? You go 45 minutes drive from Toowoomba. Is that, um, is that west? Um, I would have to, um, look, I have to confess, Lucas, I, I can't really give you an opinion. Um, I don't really know, uh, apart from what you're telling me here, that's 45 minutes from Toowoomba exactly where it is or what, what the growth drivers might be. It um, sounds like a country locality where you've got big acreage. Sounds like a great thing, great place to be lifestyle-wise, but in terms of 
growth, um, I can't imagine what the growth drivers will be. Um, so I can't really give you any help, helpful response. Um, Caroline is asking about Coolum Beach on the Sunshine Coast. Yeah, one of my favorite parts of the Sunshine Coast. I would suggest perhaps a little bit underrated, um, but it's just, uh, Coolum's just a, a beautiful stretch of beach sort of sweeping up to the north towards Noosa, um, but um, a lot more affordable than Noosa. And um, they're just looking at um, medium prices, about 650,000 for houses and low 400s for apartments. Uh, apartment medium price has grown 6.5% in the last 12 months, an indication that, um, that values are growing in that area and that there is good demand. Um, what we've seen happen on the Sunshine Coast, as I said earlier, though, has been quite a strong emergence of the economy in various ways, the new medical precinct being one of those things, and it's driven a demand for uh, beachside property in good areas. Uh, Noosa markets had some major uplift, I think, as a result of that, because new people have come to live and work on the Sunshine Coast in facilities like the University Hospital. That's going to be an ongoing process, I think, for the Sunshine Coast. And markets like Coolum is going to continue to attract demand because it's, it's a beautiful part of the world. Um, a good lifestyle there. Uh, postcode 4573. Vacancies, yeah, 2 2.5%. Two uh, they tend to fluctuate a bit. I guess it's probably because being what it is, Coolum is, is sort of hooked into the tourism market and so vacancies tend to sort of fluctuate um, a little bit. But um, at the present moment, they're fairly sort of acceptable benign levels. So, yeah, a good lifestyle market. And I think it's, as the Sunshine Coast continues to strengthen as an economy as it is doing, um, I think it's going to be a market that attracts demand. It's not too far from the Sunshine Coast Airport, which very soon is going to be an international airport. And um, you know, the tourist trade is going to be heading in various directions, but including up past, up through Coulomb towards Nusa. So I think that market's going to get some uplift from that. Western Sydney, around Penrith, the near plains, will the airport bring any major gains in the near future? So that's a question from Sean. Well, I think inevitably um, the new airport's gonna be a massive driver. And it's, it's not just the airport, you know, airport's a big thing, um, creates all sorts of things. And one of the things it creates is a, a major jobs node because if you look at all the airports in the major cities of Australia, some of the biggest jobs nodes in every capital city of Australia are around the airport. That's the case in Brisbane. The biggest jobs node in Brisbane is um, what they call the Australian Trade Coast Precinct. Um, you've got the Brisbane Airport and the Brisbane Seaport quite close together and around. There's all these commercial industrial businesses that have reasons to want to be close to airports and seaports. Um, so airports are major generators of jobs nodes and people you know, always want to live as close as they can to where they work. So there's going to be this huge uh, commercial industrial precinct um, established around that new um, Badgeries Creek Airport and um, it's going to drive a demand for real estate in places like Penrith and also Blacktown, Liverpool. But Penrith, I think it's going to get a lot of uplift from that. The Western Sydney economy, I'm sure you've seen, there's been lots of media about the emergence of the Western Sydney economy, how strong it is, how big it is. I think it's going to continue to be the case. And the once that airport is, is more close to being a reality, and everything that's going to spring up around, including the infrastructure, there's going to be, you know, road networks, rail links, all that sort of thing. It's going to just generate a huge economy and add to the growth that we're already seeing in Western Sydney. So, yeah, Penrith and other nearby areas is going to get uplift. For now, you know, Sydney's had, had a big cycle last year, in the last 18 months, values have come back. But looking long term, that precinct, Sean, I think it's going to be a good place to own real estate, taking a long-term view. Sean, you're asking a further question, wondering where to invest right now, Sydney or Brisbane? I'd 
I'd say Brisbane uh, for a number of reasons. As, as I just commented, Sydney's had a big cycle. Um, we're seeing some uplift, some recovery in the last 12 months, but I think that's kind of going to level out in uh, 2020, as uh, particularly as more vendors come to the party and there's more of a balance between supply and demand. I don't think Sydney's going to have another runaway boom like it did previously. Um, Maybe got a little bit carried away from the uplift that we saw in the latter part of 2019. Um, and Sydney, of course, is now a very expensive market. Um, I'd be looking elsewhere, for where's next, basically. And um, one of the answers to that question is likely to be Brisbane. Lots of investors are looking to Brisbane, uh, not just because it's more affordable, but because um, some of the ducks are starting to fall into line. Infrastructure being what's been missing in Brisbane is a really strong local economy. That's what Sydney's had. That's what Melbourne's had. And part of the reason why their economies have been so strong is because there's been this massive spending on infrastructure, and that creates all this economic activity and jobs. And from that comes demand for real estate. Brisbane has been lacking that, but it's changing. Some very big projects starting to crank up the the Queen's Wharf project, the, the cross, um, cross city rail, the cross river rail, expansion of the airport, um, upgrades of motorways. Um, it's really starting to click in um, in Brisbane. And once that infrastructure spin really gets underway, that's when we're going to see uplift in the Brisbane market. And at the same time, one of the things that's been holding Brisbane back has been the oversupply in the inner city apartment market, and that's gradually been absorbed and vacancy rates have come down. So we're starting to get conditions where, where Brisbane is, is ready to be a growth market at long last. And it's also got that favorable affordability comparison between itself and Sydney and Melbourne. So I'd, choosing between Sydney and Melbourne, I'd, I'd certainly opt for Brisbane. Oh, sorry, choosing between Sydney and Brisbane. I would also consider Adelaide and Perth capital cities worthy of condition, uh, consideration, places where the buying is good, the value for money is great, and I think um, they're on the verge of um, growth phases. Angus, um, looking to buy next investment property, um, recently built in Terrelgan. Um, well, I think that's a good place to own real estate Angus, um, certainly a, a market that's growing, very affordable, uh, good things happening in the Latrobe City economy. And I think Terrelgan is probably the best place in Latrobe City to, to focus on. Uh, lots of good things there. And he asks you, should I build in the place? In other words, do another property in Terrelgan. I think you should always diversify geographically. Don't sort of have all your eggs in one basket. You've got a good result in Toronto, so look for um, another place, um, another, um, you're asking maybe another country town in Victoria. Yeah, I think um, regional Victoria is a great market to be in. I just uh, was writing something earlier today. Um, I've been saying for the last couple of years that regional Victoria has been the strongest market in Australia and lots of regional centres and towns in Vic Victoria have had annual growth um, in their median prices above 10%. And why is that happening? Well, the regional Victorian economy is really strong. Victoria is the strongest economy in the nation. It's got the strongest population growth. It's not just Melbourne, it's regional Victoria as well. And uh, here's uh, a factoid that uh, would surprise a lot of people. Where in Australia has got the lowest unemployment rate of anywhere in Australia? The answer is regional Victoria and its unemployment rate rate has come down substantially in the last two or three years. Really strong economy, and that's what's helping to drive growth in places like Terrelgan, but I'd, I'd be looking elsewhere. You might even look in some other states, but if you want to stay in Victoria, Angus, I would suggest, um, you know, uh, you're saying excluding Geelong and Ballarat. Well, I'd certainly have Bendigo very high on my list. Um, where else? Um, places like Wangaratta. Aubrey Wodonga at the border with New South Wales, worth considering. Um, I'd probably, I'd say number one, Bendigo, um, for all sorts of reasons. Very strong regional city, growing, diversified economy, well connected to Melbourne, very affordable, good rental returns, all sorts of things. Um, I would have said Terralgan and, and the Latrobe City, but you're already there, so um, I'd, um, I'd be considering 
and Pendico. There are other places worth considering Shepparton, Echuca, Wangaratta, Aubrey Wodonga. Um, David's saying Brisbane's still holding steady. Yeah, it is steady. It's been steady for a number of years, just chugging along. Individual precincts have done better than that, of course. The individual suburbs and precincts have had really good growth, but Brisbane as a whole has just been very lukewarm, I guess, but it's going to do better than hold steady this year, David. I think it's really going to move into a growth phase for all the reasons I talked about just a little bit earlier. Um, Shafina saying, we'd like to move to the Gold Coast. Which area would you pick? Uh, so we have good lifetime potential for the house to go up in value. Well, um, I would suggest, yeah, you want to move to the Gold Coast. Um, lots of people are um, for the lifestyle. And that's why the population continues to be one of the leaders in Australian terms of population growth. Um, but for capital growth, I think you've got to avoid the sort of the high rise coastal strip. Um, and there's just so much new supply. The median price for a surface of paradise apartment today is lower than it was 10 years ago. That tells you something. But some of the inland suburbs where, you know, people actually live on the Gold Coast and work on the Gold Coast, not the sort of the tourist market, not the speculator market, but the, the real uh, residential market of the Gold Coast, the inland suburbs. Um, there's plenty of good lifestyle to be had there. I mean, say around sort of say around Southport, the suburbs around there, um, you want to be you, you're quite close to um, to the water, but there's lots of infrastructure there. Like there's a university campus, big hospital, um, rail links, um, an emerging jobs node around the the education medical precinct, uh, suburbs that are and are affordable. Um, you're so well situated, you want to jump on the motorway or on the train and head north to Brisbane, um, not far from the Broadwater. So I'd be thinking around there, um, some of those suburbs inland, but you're going to get better capital growth in the real residential suburbs, the housing suburbs, not the high-rise um, apartment suburbs. Just stay away from that and concentrate on where the people who actually are long-term residents who live and work on the Gold Coast, where they are. Okay, and uh, Shafina, second question, Eagle B, um, that's a little bit north of the Gold Coast, heading up towards Brisbane in Logan City. Um, as I mentioned earlier, you may not have tuned in a little bit earlier when I was talking about Logan City. It's been a bit of a struggle market lately. Um, and looking at Eagle Bee, uh, the median price has dropped sort of 4% in the last 12 months. Well, it's not, it's not Robinson Crusoe there, um, but um, it hasn't been a great long-term performer. If you look at its average annual growth rate of over the last 10 years, it's less than 1% a year, and that says something. Um, look, I think, and I often say this to people, um, you, you're wondering whether Eagle Bee is a good place to invest. Well, it's affordable and you'll probably get a really good rental yield, but are you going to get capital growth? The question I, I urge people to always ask when they're considering a location is, is this location that I'm considering, is this the absolute best place in Australia that I can buy for you know, capital growth um, moving forward? Um, and I would suggest that Eagle Bee is not the answer. Uh, you, you cannot answer yes to Eagle Bee um, or Logan City generally at the moment. Uh, there's lots of places you should, should consider all of Australia as your market. You can buy anywhere in Australia and don't just be confined to your own backyard. Um, there are other parts of Brisbane that I think would be better to buy with us, perhaps the northern part of the Brisbane market and you know, around, um, say, Launton Petrie, where they're building a new university campus. Um, still affordable, but greater growth drivers in that market. Um, I'd be considering you know, markets like the Sunshine Coast, regional cities like Mackay, if you want to be in Queensland, but interstate, lots of locations. Regional Victoria, I've just talked about. Um, Adelaide, I think, is a market that's going to show a really good uplift. The economy is much stronger there than people realise. Great value for money buying. Um, Perth has got uh, good options and starting to show signs of growth again. Um, so regional Queensland, regional New South Wales, regional Victoria, 
cities like Adelaide, other parts of Brisbane. But um, again, I repeat that point. Ask yourself this question is, it will be the absolute best place in Australia where I can buy to invest really well for future capital growth. And I suggest the answer for Eagle B is no. And there's other better places to consider. Saeed, uh, okay, if I missed my question. Yes, you're right, I did. There's been so many coming in. I almost missed your thoughts on Box Hill in Sydney. Right, hey, just give me a minute to fall up some information. Oh, just bear with me a minute. I've just got to get out my book of maps, as I sometimes do, just to get give myself some perspective. On location 108. Righty, well, it's way up in the, the northwest, sort of beyond Rouse Hill. Is that what we're talking about, Saeed? Um, that box hill, um, according according to the figures, the median house price is 790000 It's increased 20% in the last 12 months. Now, I probably would suspect that that's misleading. It's, pretty, it's a new development area. Looking at the map, there's, you know, it's... it's a new suburb, a developing suburb, and is, um, so I'd say that medium price growth figure is, is rather misleading. Um, yeah, I mean, the question to ask is um, what what's going to be the growth drivers there? What, what's special about that location compared to all the others? I mean, if I was buying up in that precinct, I'd want to be, I want to be, focused on the new Northwest Metro line. I mean, there's a lot of evidence that there's demand people buying along the spine of the new rail link and um, proximity to that, I think is an important factor buying up there. Um, so, and also where's the infrastructure? It's always important to consider what you're close to. Where are the schools? Where are the shops? Where's the public transport? Where's the train station? Um, I don't think Box Hill has got a lot of that to offer. Maybe in future it will, but right now as a new development area, it probably doesn't. So if I was sort of choosing investment, I want to be a little bit closer to to where that um, that infrastructure is, particularly the new rail link, which I think is a is a major major factor. That's what um, I'll be wanting to be near. Um, so yeah, just need to think carefully about why you would consider that. If if, if you know if you're buying um, a home and, and its lifestyle and that's a little bit sort of like semi-rural, rural residential perhaps as a new development area, um, then that would be, you know, a reason to go there. But if you're thinking of investment, again, I'd ask the question, this is the best place in Sydney that I can invest? What will drive values? And the things that do drive values in the future is proximity to all those important basic things, school shops, medical services, public transport. If there's a train station, so much the better. Um, and I don't think Box Hill really offers that, certainly not at the moment. Um, and the other th factor is I'm just looking at the vacancy rates. It's clearly a new development area, and those new development areas, you know, lots of new estates, and suddenly you have really big vacancy rates, and vacancy rates have been rising really steadily over the last, say, three or four years. And currently, according to Eskimo Research, the vacancy rates for that postcode is 11.5%. You certainly don't, as an investor, want to be buying in an area for vacancy rate like that. So keep that in mind while you're considering that. Okay, it's... Okay, Tracy, you're looking at Tarragindi, six kilometres south of Brisbane CBD, owner-occupy, 
long term growth. Okay, so you sort of um, wonder, Tracy, if this is um, for you or for, for a client. Doesn't matter, I suppose. Um, I'm just going to look at my trusty book of maps just to get a better perspective. I mean, Yeah, I just think that suburbs like that are always going to be, at worst, solid. Yeah, it's been, you know, Brisbane over, say, if you look at 10-year growth averages, Brisbane hasn't been a great performer uh, over the last 10 years. I think it's coming into a growth period, and if you look at the figures again in a couple of years, that they'll be better. But Tarragindi is one that's pretty solid, you know, it's long-term capital growth average is about 5% a year. Brisbane in terms, that, that's pretty good. Median house price, 790. That's sort of middle market. Good location, close to the CBD. Um, it's proximate to the Pacific Motorway. It's also got, and that's sort of on the, the um, the eastern side, on the western side, is the, the train line heading south from central Brisbane towards the Gold Coast. So it's got proximity to major transport spines, which is always important. Well-established suburb. Um, lots of the basic infrastructure. Was, and the previous question I addressed about Box Hill and Sydney, one of the questions was, where's the infrastructure? Where's the, where's the schools, the shops? medical services, the public transport were a suburb like Tarragindi, you know, has got all that in spades. It's well established, good residential area. You, when we look at a map, we, one of the things that stands out is it's got lots of green spaces. That's always important. You know, some really big green space areas for you. That's all important part of the lifestyle and a reason why people would want to go and live there as well as, you know, its proximity to, um, to central Brisbane. So... You know, if somebody's looking to buy something as an owner occupier. I'm thinking that's a good area to be in. You know, you um, and it's and it's going to always be a, a show steady growth. Um, it's only done one or two percent in the last twelve months, but that's sort of Brisbane lately. But its long term growth record is pretty solid. So I suggest Tracy that that's um, that's a real estate suburb with what I call good real estate bones. Okay, yeah, it's for you, so yeah, why not? Um, yeah, I mean, it's right next to Annerley, which I always regard as a really good suburb as well, uh, Green Slopes, Holland Park. I mean, that, that's really, um, that's, yeah, that's good, solid Brisbane City real estate. Um, with, yeah, good bones. Okay, we're um, we've just gone over the hour and I can't go for much longer. I've got other things I have to do tonight and places I have to be. So I'll just do one last question. Uh, and it's from David and he's asking about Cheltenham in Melbourne. And um, it's an interesting one to consider for a reason which I will mention in a moment. I've just got to pull up my book of maps. Okay, part of the um, the southeastern suburbs of Melbourne. Yeah, pretty good suburb. I'll just call up some. Some of the basic information. About Cheltenham in Melbourne. Yeah.
One of the reasons why it sort of sparks my interest, David, is because um, we've got this um, planned for, there's lots of major infrastructure plans for Melbourne at the moment, some of which are underway and other which are longer term planning, but there's this new rail link sort of coming from the south west up through the airport and to the east and southeast. And from what I'm reading, um, the where it's going to terminate is, is Cheltenham. So it's going to have that extra piece of infrastructure if it ever happens. Of course, that's very long term. It's probably not going to affect the market if, if ever for a long, long time. Median house price were around 950. Um, it's dropped as um, 8% in the last 12 months. Well, that's um, a lot of Melbourne has done that, um, that correction. But what's significant is that in the last quarter, it's increased 3.5%. So that, again, is typical Melbourne. In annual terms, it's down, but in the latest quarter, it's up quite a lot. So the revival is underway. The long-term growth record is good. Um, quite a lot of apartments sold. Um, 580000 is the median price. And that's up 7%. Now, that, that's a factor that I've seen right across Melbourne, it's also in some parts of Sydney, but it's been a, a big factor in the Melbourne market, I've noticed, that there's lots of suburbs where the median house price is down in annual terms, but the median apartment price is up. And I think what's happening is that people have been um, targeting that more affordable product apartments. Also, um, there's lots of de um, demographics that prefer apartments, young adults prefer apartment lifestyle, uh, this is the uh, retiring market downsizing to units and townhouses. And then also nowhere in Australia uh, gets more uplift from overseas migrants than Melbourne does. And a lot of them are people coming from places where that apartment type lifestyle is the norm. So we're seeing a lot of demand coming into apartments. So Cheltenham is a pl one of those places where the median house price has dropped in the last 12 months, but the median apartment price has risen. 7% according to this, 580000 is the median apartment price. So, um, yeah, just a good, solid uh, middle market Melbourne suburb. It's always going to have demand. And, um, yeah, I think as we go forward this year, I think we're going to see a lot of demand for apartments. Uh, first home buyers um, boosted by the government scheme and those other demographics I mentioned. All right. So... Time is up. Um, I really can't go on much longer because I've got to be somewhere somewhere else tonight um, and we've been going for an hour and 10 minutes. So um, thanks everybody for your questions. Lots of diversity in the question. Plenty of questions about Brisbane and I understand that because it's top of mind for real estate consumers for all sorts of reasons but also questions about other parts of Australia, regional Victoria, Melbourne, um, the Sydney metropolitan area um, in a number of cases. So um, thanks a lot for your questions and your participation. I'll be doing a live Q&A. I only do it once a month on a Wednesday evening. Roughly the same time next month um, we'll be doing it again. So um, thanks for your interest and support and participation. And uh, that's it for now. Let's do it again in one month's time. Bye for now.